welcome back and thanks for watching Edupedia word videos my name is Niyati Seth your online educator and my topic for the presentation is class class Ganethostomata okay or the class of Piscean the one that bears jaws okay so let's proceed towards our topic that is Nathostomata class Nathostomata or the jaw bones are vertebrates that possess jaws one of the most significant development in early vertebrate evolution was the development of the jaw which is a hinged structure attached to the cranium that allows an animal to grasp and tear its food okay the evolution of jaws allowed early ganathostomes to exploit food resources that were unavailable to the jawless animals in early evolutionary history there were ganathostomes or the jawed fishes and the Ganathans, that is jawless fishes. Ganathostomes later evolved into all tetrapods, including amphibians, birds, and mammals. If we see Ganathostomes, then early Ganathostomes were jawed fishes that possessed two sets of paired fins, which increased their ability to maneuver accurately. Okay, these paired fins were pectoral fins located on the interior body and the pelvic fins on the posterior. Okay, the evolution of the jaw combined with the paired fins permitted ganathostomes to expand from the sedentary suspension feeding of jawless fishes and become mobile predators. Okay. The nathostomes' ability to exploit new nutrient sources led to their evolutionary success during the Devonian period. Two early groups of nathostomes were the Acandodian and Placoderms, which arose in the late Silurian period and are now extinct. Okay, so most modern ganathostomes belongs to the two clades: one is cartilaginous fishes and other is fishes. Okay. So, in a short, uh, fishes are the world's most dominant vertebrates as their number exceed other combined vertebrate groups and also most divers. There are two major clades. One is cartilaginous fishes and other is bony fishes. Okay. Cartilaginous fishes are amples are sharks and rays. And a skeleton of bone that is bony fishes. The amples are ray finned fishes, lung fishes and the low finned fishes. Okay. So, Let's proceed uh, towards our first clad of the fishes that is cartilaginous fishes. The clad cartilaginous fishes they consist of shark, okay, rays and skates together with the saw fishes and a few dozen species of fishes called chimaras or ghost sharks, okay. These cartilaginous fishes are jawed fishes that possess paired fins and the skeleton made of cartilage. This clad arose approximately 370 million years ago in the early or the middle Devonian period. Okay. They all have a skeleton of cartilage. They have five to seven pairs of gill slits, the shading and the replacement of teeth which are modified scale. Chondrothys means cartilaginous fishes. They have tooth-like scales called dermal denticles or the placoid scales. Denticles, they provide two functions, protection and in most cases, streamlining. Okay. Examples are shark and rays. Okay. Most cartilaginous fishes, they live in marine habitats. Although a few species, they live in the freshwater for part or all of their lives. Most sharks are carnivores that feed on the live prey either swallowing it whole or using their jaws and to teeth to tear it into small pieces. Shark teeth probably evolved from the jagged scales that cover their skin called placoid scales. Okay. Sharks have well developed sense organ that aid in locating prey including a keen sense of smell and electroreception or okay organ called ampullae of laryngini i repeat organ called as ampullae of laryngini it enables sharks to detect the electromagnetic fields that are produced by all living organism including their prey only aquatic or amphibious animal that possess the electroreception okay 
uh, these uh, fish like vertebrates with the well developed fin and teeth they have the two pairs of fins and one of them supported by the pectoral girdle the other by the pelvic girdle their most distinctive character as construct to contrast it with the bony fishes is that their their entire skeleton including the skull is cartilaginous okay the skull is far simpler than its among the bony fishes the gill filaments are attached throughout their length to the partition between the gill opening instead of being free okay fertilization is internal in all of them and is affected by the pair of rod like copulatory organ and is supported by one or more cartilaginous okay the sharks and rays they are usually looked upon as more primitive than the bony fishes okay examples are sharks skates and ray this is a skates this is shark and this is ray okay now come to the bony fishes name is osteochthysis okay the member of this clade are also known as bony fishes they are characterized by bony skeleton the vast majority of present day fish belong to this group which in consist of approximately 30000 species making it the largest class of vertebrates in existence today okay nearly all bony fishes have an ossified skeleton with specialized bone cells or osteochthyes that produce and maintain a calcium phosphate matrix okay a few group of uh, this clade or bony fishes such as sturgeons and paddle fish have primarily cartilaginous skeleton but retain some bony elements the skin of bony fish is covered by overlapping scales skin glands secrete mucus that reduces drag when swimming and aids the fish in osmoregulation that we will be studying in detail okay like sharks bony fishes have a lateral line system that detects vibration in the water all bony fishes they use gill for exchange water is drawn over gills that are located in chambers covered and ventilated by a protective muscular flap called operculum okay many bony fish also have a swim bladder or a gas filled organ that help in control the buoyancy of the fish okay so there are the three main lineages emerged out of this clade one is ray fishes lung fishes and the low fin fishes okay they have scales as i have told you in the first slide most species of the bony fishes are covered with and protected by a layer of plates called scales or the placoid placoid scales okay there are four different types of uh, bony fishes scale cosmoid genoid cycloid and tenoid true cosmoid scales are found only on extinct cross septigians the inner layer of cosmoid scale is compact bone on the top of this bone layer lays a spongy layer and then a layer of cosmin that is a type of a dentin okay and the upper surface is enamel okay the one which we have in our teeth okay now come to the second gar bicaios and the reed fishes they have genoid scales they are similar to cosmoid scales but a layer of genoin lies over the cosmin layer the cosmin layer is a type of dentin okay and under the enamel uh, the scales are diamond shaped shiny and hard okay most uh, bony fishes have uh, cycloid and tenoid scales both cycloid and tenoid scales consist of an outer layer of calcium and the inner layer of connective tissues now come to the body spines body spines are modified scales okay protective spines are common in slow swimming fishes and others that need to protect themselves without moving function <laughs> most fishes Uh, have mobile razor shaped precaudal fin sh uh, spines that they use to protect themselves okay. fishes they have pigmentation or the coloration pigment is mostly contained in cells called chromatophores most fishes can contract and expand their chromatophores to change their colors reflective cells called iridocytes can change color rapidly because the different wavelength of light are absorbed at various depths fishes may appear a different color underwater than the surface okay some fish such as ghost class cat fish they lack pigmentation now come to their bioluminescence property of bony fishes this is the distinguishing feature some 
fish uh, bioluminescence property that is they can emit light certain pigments called luciferins they emit light when oxidized some fish produce light in the luminescent organ or in the cells called photophores in some fishes it is light producing bacteria that live in or on the fish that actually produce the light depending on a species bioluminescence may attract mates deter or confuse predators attract prey or act as a headlight to help a fish see in the dark now come to the mucus a fish bony fishes they secrete a layer of mucus that covers its entire body mucus helps protect the fish from the infection in some bony fishes mucus may serve additional functions some is species of parrot fish they envelop their body in mucus bubbles at night while they rest this mucus barrier may hide the parrot fish from nocturnal predators that rely on their sense of smell to locate their prey okay this way parrot fish hide itself from the predator bony fishes are further divided into two extant clade clades uh, that is ray finned uh, fishes and uh, low finned fishes okay actino tarigi or the ray finned fishes they include many familiar fishes such as tuna bass trout and salmon okay ray finned fishes are named for their fins that are web of skin supported by bony spines called rays in contrast the fish fins of uh, lobe finned fishes are fleshy and lobed supported by bone okay although most members of this clade are extinct living members include the less familiar lung fishes and coelacanths okay this is the representation of ray finned uh, fishes okay now come to the uh, second clade that is a lobe finned fishes or subclass crossoptyrigi they have fleshy ventral fins reinforced with the skeletal part they have a large marine fish belonging to a group of primitive bony fishes the only living fish is the coelacanth or latimeria species okay this is the representation of a lobe finned fishes now come to the lung fishes lung fishes they are similar fins with the lobe finned fishes they have gills and one or two lung like sacs they inflate the sac by gulping air some fishes totally dependent on this gaseous exchange or else drown if kept under water okay this is the representation of a lung fishes uh, um a living species or the lepidosiren look at the four slender fins of this fish which are homologous to the four legs of the terrestrial vertebrates okay carnivore they are fearless predators they have two lungs which enable them to breathe when the water has dried up they survive drought by hibernation or by digging itself into the mud hole and curls up in a chamber that is lined with the mucus and breathes out of the mouth okay so this comes to an end in the next section we will be studying about the class amphibia of the animal kingdom so till then stay tuned thank you and keep watching edupedia word videos